Yes, do come in. Do you identify as pure human? Ain't this my day. Are you a pure human? I'm not sure how pure I am, but yes, I am human. Hmm, not pure. That'll be all. Apologies. Man, if I were still working for the HGF, I'd arrest your ass. Hey, Sarah. Oh, great. Who was that person? It's none of your business. So, what can I help you in your life? You're not here to help me. I'm just here to ask a few questions. A flip, if you will. Make this quick, it's almost closing time. Why are you here? Living in Barcelona. Because I felt like it? I've moved after the HGF army in Japan years ago. You know, back when you were still human. You didn't decide to live right after I started doing so? Huh, that's one off the checklist. Would you assume I was stalking you? Next! Why did you work for Capaldi that time? Because I needed rent money. Being a private investigator doesn't pay well when not many people come here. You were working for them while being freelance? And this is your first job after being an HGF agent? I'm sorry I stabbed you, but I was doing what I was being told. You were just following orders. <laughs> you never changed. You went from a private police force to being a violent pawn for the capitalists. What? Was returning to showbiz too boring to you? Seems like the easiest job in the world if you ask me. I was joking about US Republicans while also being silent about the conflict in Gaza. Let's not go there. What do they want from me anyway? The CEO of Capaldi is a big collector of supernatural beings, and a Dullahan was on his list. He's an obsessive fan of your channel after he discovered you, so he hired me to track you down and sent you to his chateau. What a disgusting human being. And I work for someone who ended up killing his wife and children. Sophie? Why did he do that? Should I call for help? No. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Is he gone? Mm -mm. Yep. Thanks for the help. And for talking to Sophie too. No problem. Lucky I didn't have to hear that whole depressing story again. Say, who exactly was that man anyway? Vincent Benedict, a Crimson Devil, currently wanted for conspiracy and insurrection. He is a manipulative mastermind that wants to groom anyone to be as sadistic and violent as possible. I should know. He used to be my boss. Hmm, I probably should have covered this game last year. It's British made even. Forney, I expected you to cosplay as a 13th. Or 12th. In some episodes, he had a similar hairstyle than your previous one. Meh, I prefer the 10th. He's my favorite. That's why I dyed my hair. Really? Not the 11th to fit in? Not even Amy Pond? And what? Wear a bow tie or a wig? Nah, man, that's too dorky even for me. It's full hawk and a suit tie or nothing, sunshine! <laughs> My first Wii game review, and it's this? Holy shit, I love Doctor Who! Well, at least the first was the Davis run, that being about the 9th and 10th Doctors. Before I started writing the script, I only watched 2 or 3 episodes of Matt Smith's, and only one of Capaldi's. The 13th? Never did so, because their episodes are not available for streaming in Spain in any official capacity whatsoever. What bullshit. Even if I did watch them, I wouldn't make a 5 hour video essay about how I feel about them. And don't get me started on the classic show, I only ever watched clips of it and the first episode and an earthly child. Part 1. Fuck, it's serialized? Can you blame me? There are a lot of episodes and some that are missing because it was cheaper back then to throw them away than preserve them longer. Ah, who needs them? But what is Doctor Who? Well, it's a British show about a time-traveling human-like alien that goes in many adventures with at least one companion. They're known as the Doctor. Doctor what now? A Time Lord that can regenerate with a new face and personality when they're nearly dead. Basically an excuse to change actors after they call quits. Throughout the show's old and current ones, plus a TV movie, they're played by a lot of people, namely... Hartnell, Horndall, Bradley, that's just for the first Doctor. Drockton, Perwy, Baker, Davidson, Otter Baker, McCoy, McGann, Hurt, Eccleston, Tennant, Smith, Capaldi, Whitaker, Tennant, again, and Gatwa. 
ignoring the many other versions of them. Do not get me into the Timeless Child! Most of the docs were played by a white man, and one of them is just a repeat of an older doctor. But every doc has their own spin and their companions, mostly human. But other times it's human like aliens, another Time Lord, and a robot dog. But of course, they also have a rogues gallery, memorably more ways than one. You have the Master, another time low with many faces. The hatred-filled fascist known as the Daleks, in case the human-sized tanks with a laser gun in a vacuum, I guess. The emotionless Cybermen, former organic beings who convert themselves into cyborgs. And the Suntarans, a warrior race fighting a never-ending war against alien jellyfish. Yeah, the show can get silly at times. At least once, the dark to face TV sets are still faces, mannequins, a vampire that sucks blood for a straw, aliens with a gas problem, an absorbing alien, cubes. Sure, rhino cops, Jadoon Platoon upon the moon! God, I love saying that, especially how Tennis said. Jadoon Platoon upon the moon. And statues that move and send you back to the past if you ever so slightly break eye contact with them. Wait, that's not silly. And that's just in the Revival series, don't make me list all the foes he faced in the classic run! The show started in 1963, but the Revival show started in 2005 after cancellation and a TV movie since 1989 is the most well-known iteration. I should know, I grew up with it. And like I said, series 1 through 4 are what I'm most familiar with, though I didn't find much nor care about it when I first watched it as a kid. I thought it was some medical drama set in a space station in the far future, turns out it wasn't. What I watched was an episode about fake news transmitted through brains by Simon Pegg of all people. It is considered one of the weakest episodes, so it's probably not the best episode to start with, but since then, I really love those two doctors, the 10th one especially. Can you tell? Though the ninth one is interesting, still getting used to being the last of the Time Lords after a great war between them and the Daleks. A cynical type with a smarmy attitude, which he eventually warms up till the end of Eccleston's run. But you won't be seeing them much in the games. It is to be expected for a series like this to have a few video games, unlike Super Nanny, EastEnders, or Coronation Street. Do I sound weird when I say them? The first DW game, a collection of games ripped from the arcades, was released for the BBC Micro in 1983. Hmm, I wonder why it's on that system. Over the years, much like many movies and TV properties, they range from decent to terrible to top trumps Doctor Who. Move over, Pokemon card game on Gay Boy! There are different kinds of games that I could choose, like Destiny of the Doctor! But making it work on Windows 10 would be a doozy. The Adventure Games, shame they're delisted off Steam and my abandonware doesn't have them. The Eternity Clock, all the PS3s I own are dead and I sold my video years ago, also delisted off Steam. The Edge of Time, or The Runaway. I don't have a VR headset. Dalek Attack. I don't like Eurojank platformers. Doctor Who and the Warlord. I don't like text adventures. I don't like the heist. I don't do hidden object games. Return to Earth. Sorted. Doctor Who Return to Earth is a Wii exclusive game released in PAL regions only, along with a companion game for the DS, Evacuation Earth, in November 2010, so after Series 5 finished airing. It was developed by Asylum Entertainment, a now defunct British studio that made nothing but licensed shovelware, including Pop Up Girls Chemical Extraction, a game I reviewed many years ago. Or was it some other version of me reviewed it? I don't remember. Now I could just download an ISO of it and want to be a dolphin like a stinky pirate, but since this is a Wii game, I have a feeling that there's gonna be some forced motion control shenanigans about, so... I bought an actual Wii, specifically one that plays GameCube games. And I didn't bother installing the homebrew channel, so I bought the game as well. 40 plus euros well spent. It's a business expense, I swear! Hmm, this remote looks rather boring, don't you think? Don't worry, because you get a remote that looks like 11 Sonic Screwdriver, officially licensed by the Beep and Nintendo. It's even rechargeable, unlike the official remote. It's just amazing to learn it actually exists. Stupid, but it's rather bloody expensive these days. I went on a bidding war for one the other month, and I just gave up because there's no way I'm spending 30 plus euros on a remote. That's with shipping in mind, by the way. Right, let's not waste any more time. Hello, Z! We're off to a great start, it's not even the right version of the theme song, instead it's the one used for Series 1 for free! Low budget is no excuse for this mistake! Anyways, at least this isn't the right version in the main menu. So I'm seeing the intro take from the show and it just looks weird, I just can't put my finger on it. Oh well, let me just watch a random Series 5 episode. Oh. Oh no. 
The bastards didn't have enough time to implement widescreen to a game from 2010. I don't know what's worse, that or watching the first four series of the revival in Squish 4x3 on Prime Video. Thankfully it got fixed before I started making this video, but fuck was that about? The story here is that Doc and Amy are traveling around the rings of Jupiter only for them to notice a signal coming from this abandoned spaceship. So they land on it, literally, and try to investigate. Here's chapter 1, where you just walk through the door to the inside. That's it. <laughs> Fuck, I can't understand what they're saying with the loud noises around. I need to check if this has subtitles. Oh great, the pause menu is outright spending the crushing inevitability of the Daleks for me. So does the game over screen. There's no subtitles by the way. Can you feel the shipness in this game? I don't usually count on critics because that's beneath me, but the game was criticized by at least one game reviewing channel from Australia for looking like a PS1 or an N64 game. And that's bad, I guess. I don't know, I just don't see it. If it had warping and a lack of text and filtering, then I'd get it. It does, however, have frame rate issues like an average N64 game. It can run at 60 FPS in a few places, but most of the time it can drop below 30. And yes, it does look abysmal. Aesthetic wise, I find it decent. The character models go for this anime esque look, which don't look too bad. However, the animations are interrelated, and there aren't any facial regulating them, plus the in-game cutscenes are super simple. There aren't many camera cuts nor any animations specific for them, just to play a character's idle animations. The cheapness is strong with this one. In short, it's not the sniper too bad, but I've seen better looking and better running Wii games than this. Sound design is meh. Without the music, there isn't any ambiance most of the time, and even if there is, there's always 3 seconds of silence before it loops back. The sounds of the doors closing are literally just the doors opening, but in reverse. Oh, don't tell me they didn't have the cash to at least find stock sounds for closing doors. Doom didn't do such a cheap trick like that. No, they cut one sound file into two. Sorry for ranting about the cheapness of the game. It's okay to make a game for cheap. You just have to try and make it as good as possible in a tight budget. No, I think I know where most of it went to. My trusty son never fails. Apologies in advance for speaking ill of the dead, but the acting in this game just screams Matthew Perry in Fallout New Vegas. Right when the doctor first speaks, he doesn't sound as excited as in the show. Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, home to such exciting features as the Great Red Spot and the Gossamer Rings. The Lucy Gray, I'm on the Lucy Gray. Wow. This is fantastic. This is history in the making. The first ship to return to Earth after the solar storms of the 26th century. You must be very proud, Ivy. Holy shit, I'm with Chris Eccleston. That's so amazing. Don't come as tenant ever again. I can commend the effort of bringing Matt Smith and Karen Gillan in to reprise their roles, but it's obvious that voice acting wasn't their forte, at least at the time of this game's release. Maybe they could have had more time to flex their acting muscles, but this is Shovel where we're talking about. They needed to make this quick and cheap. The music uses some of Murray Gold's stuff, like the theme song and I Am The Doctor, but there's some original stuff from Glenn Perry and Chris Green. It's not bad, actually. It's just too bad the sound design makes it worse. There was an instance where the game played two songs at once. It's that terrible. I am not looking forward to the gameplay. I really don't like the movement in this game. It's sort of like tank controls, where you're like staring at a car in a way, but it kinda doesn't. You can't walk backwards by moving the stick down like in Resident Evil games. Doing so would just make the character walk towards a few points. It just feels wrong. The camera makes it worse. For some reason, the movement misses out when the camera cuts. You're just going as you go, and then boom, sudden direction change. It's annoying. At least there's a button to reset the camera, but that's the only good mark on this type of gameplay. In the second chapter, after Amy receives her own sonic screwdriver, you're taught by this robot thing that you can collect things from her robot thing bros, so that you can use them to shoot at the color correspondence spheres hovering around. However, you have to sneak on them and stay away from their field of view, so it turns out this is a stealth game. And I gotta tell you, I suck at those where you can't kill your standard enemies like normal. 
The first chapter introduces these rather malignant maintenance robots that shoot you if they spot you. You're screwed ever can't do shit against them, so you have to hide behind cover and get around your field of vision. <sighs> Don't worry, the doctor will regenerate to Malcolm Tucker somehow. Fuck's sake, Jesus! It makes sense since you're the doctor or Amy Pond and you're defenseless, but thankfully there are ways to fool them, like luring them to traps by making them spot you or distracting them by noisemakers, like a laptop that just plays a pitch down Windows Vista login sound on repeat. I must go. Getting the crystals isn't that hard, however, there are moments where it can get frustrating, like one where you must shoot a yellow crystal to a washing machine to distract a Cyberman. Yeah, there are Cybermen in this game, the bugs spoil them, so why should you care? You don't want the enemy to spot you while getting the crystal. However, if the robot thing spots you, they go down, so you have to go far enough of them to get up. And with the Cybermen patrolling, it gets frustrating real fast. So how do you shoot at those things? Well, my fears have been realized. This game does have motion controls. You use it to aim at the moving targets, hold the B button, and then release it to shoot with the appropriate crystal to unlock pathways and activate stuff. Unfortunately, either I'm twitchy or the game is slow, meaning that I can get difficult to shoot at the right time. Worse yet, yeah, the targets can move rather quick from afar, so that's fun. You can only carry up to 6 crystals, so if they run out after so many missed shots, you have to go back and sneak around to get them. It's not only frustrating, it's also tedious as fuck. At the end of a level since the second, you get to do a minigame, most commonly being the circuit connecting one. After opening the box by holding A and shaking the remote you unscrew them, you get to move the ball on a path to the end while avoiding getting hit many times, otherwise you waste a blue crystal, and you have to get more once you run out of them. Aw, oh, this looks simple, I told you need motion controls for it, except you do. There are parts of the coast where you have to move the pointer to fix something, so that it slows down for you to cross it. Honestly, not terrible. It beats shooting stuff in normal gameplay. Can get medial, but I don't mind. Oh great, we also have tourists to disable for a while. After being chased by the boss, the fourth level ends with this mini game when you must salvage enough parts by attracting them while also shooting away the meteors. And this sucks. For some reason, if I'm dead on, I still miss. Is this game miss with me or am I just shaky? After that, the chip's AI named Ivy welcomes the doctor to the Lucy Gray, and apparently this wasn't the first time he was in it. Doc doesn't remember, but he wonders where the others are. Ivy wonders that too. Oh well, keep looking. Back to playing as Amy. The first part isn't bad, just shoot at the red spheres to stop the gas leaks and distract this bot. Then you have the next part to the green sphere. I hated this part. When you get near those robot things, a barrage of bots come and get you. At least you get to destroy the boss by timing your shots to enable the gas leaks. Frustrating though, as there will be a lot coming. And I got in a situation where the boss got stuck. Fun! Back to the doctor. More sneaking, more distractions, more getting shot, and also me jumping the gun on time gas leaks. Look, I panicked when I saw a timer after opening the door. Oh no, it turns out the ship is taken over by the Cybermen, who could have seen them coming. That's the reason why Ivy is putting the colonists to sleep, but since the Doctor and Amy are inside alive, her mission was a bust, and the Cybermen delete her. Or so it seems. Before someone in the comments call me out on missing this out, you can earn points to spend, either by sneaking behind these robot things, or have the crystals you're carrying converted after finishing the level. The only useful thing is to buy bonus crap like concept art and renders, it's not that special if you're not into that sort of thing, but for some reason the game has to slowly, individually load each icon in the menu. Fuck, this is so badly optimized. The next two levels revolve around Demi being chased by Cybermen, not too difficult even if I failed the circuit balls in chapter 7, however, they don't seem to care much once you hide and sneak behind them when getting the blue crystals again. At least there's no ghost flying this circuit. Chapter 8 is much the same, except you're outside. I have to go now. My planet needs me. Back with the doc, he makes a shocking discovery. Oh yes. You're not Tenet. It appears Ivory isn't gone yet, so yay, I guess. It turns out that the signal is some Dalek thing that sends them through time and is drawing them in. So the Daleks are gonna cause trouble soon. Who could have seen them coming? Ugh, fuck, here's some more platforming. After passing through that bit I mentioned earlier, and have to suffer through this bullshit, I made it to the chapter that made me wanna stop playing this game for good. But I don't wanna, I need to finish this! 
The start seems fine enough, until you reach this spot where you must stop the leaks after the door opens. Plus, there's a time once it does so. Damn it! I thought I'd be safe on just one side! You thought going to the side that doesn't look steamy right next to the side of steam leaks would be safe? I don't know, video game logic. It would be much safer to shoot the further red spheres and then get to the door to shoot the purple one. No, because if I try that, the purple sphere hides away, so I have to get as far as possible for it to appear. Plus, for some idiotic reason, I have to shoot the purple sphere first, then the red one so that I can progress. You can't be a clever bitch in this game. Anyways, here's VR missions. God, I'd rather play Metal Gear instead. So after this game with the Cyberman, it turns out I have 10 minutes to get Amy inside the ship. And this part confused me at first, and then I move close to the way the platform and it starts moving. Sorry about that. Fuck you. Alright, I've got the blue crystal. I press through the Cybermen and the gas leaks again, so now I just have to... Fuck! Sophie, you need to stop playing this game. Why? You know it's obvious that the game is really frustrating for you, with its controls, its stealth mechanics, and its enemy behavior. You cancelled your Atomic Heart video because of it, so why not stop playing it and just summarize the rest of the game's story? Or do you just hate yourself? Nah, not enough. The doctor saves Amy, yay! But oh no, the Cybermen want that Dalek thing, so he gets taken to their leader. We move on to Sacrifice. Ivy tells Amy to take out the engine core to disable the leader, though that will also shut down Ivy, so the chapter name doesn't lie, unless an emergency core gets active, if they're as lucky as me not witnessing this glitch in that person's footage. However, when the core got ejected, Ivy now sounds as if she got the morality core installed. Thank you, Amy. The crew is safe. I could not have fulfilled my programming without you. Either that or the first Cyberman appearance. Ivy then tells us that the doctor died or something, so she lied. No worries, he's still alive and tries to escape from the Cyberman once more before the energy core explodes, which the game gladly reminds you every minute. They're gone now, but he's now in space and the Daleks have arrived, two bodies and colorful paradigm ones. There's Poe, Lala, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, and the white one. Well, it's just the red ones, but hang on! The Daleks sound different from the show, much like the Cybermen here. No race will be spared, no planet left unburned. Our ship was destroyed by a rogue artifact when we entered this planetary system 300 years ago. You are superior in only one respect. What is that? You are better at dying. Anyways, they replaced the Cyberman for the rest of the game, so no doomsday-like showdown between the two. Dog wants to shoot the Dalek signal thing to the sun or something. Hey, we must redirect the reserve to the ship's engine in this Metal Gear Solid-like level. I wish the entire game looked like this, then I'd call it mediocre instead of other trash. TARDIS. It's more platforming for the looks of it. After that, Amy sucks the TARDIS in. Meanwhile, the Doctor overloads the core. 15 levels down, one chapter left! Because it's time for your final showdown! Pfft. Glad it's about to end. Look, a statue of the two. As they're dropping those platforms down, the dog meets the white paradigm Dalek who wants their time access, that's the signal. And he gladly gives them and is killed. Exterminate! Well, that was a downer ending. Nope! The Dalek ship gets sent to the sun, Ivy shoots at it, and Doc and Amy are safe and sound. Look, I tried to decide what just happened, but at this point, I don't give a shit. The plot is about as mediocre as my life anyway. Look, the ship is back on Earth. Ta-da! Let us never speak of this game again. So that was Return to Earth. Was it a really bad game? Oh yes! Is it the worst game ever? Oh, don't be hyperbole. This is a Squitch, and I like Squitch! Mostly for the charm. But yeah, it's shit. The only good thing that I like about this game is the circuit minigame. The rest is just a frustrating mess thanks to its forced motion controls, mediocre self mechanics, annoying bits and bobs, and just bad presentation. The seal of quality is meaningless when you get shit like this. Don't play this game. Unless you're a masochist like me, but I wouldn't play if I were you. Now let's take out that awful taste in my mouth with a first body Wii game. I hope it's not that Metroid game. You were put to sleep in 2007. How the fuck do you know about other M? What's other M? Cheeky. So, have you had fun wearing the suit? I certainly have. Then don't review us tenant ever again. No joke. Ah, not even Crowley.